This is Nicolet College, and these are a few of our prospective students. Sarah works shift work and never knows her schedule more than a week or two in advance. Committing to a 15-week term and attending classes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 to 9.50 just isn't something that she can swing. Jake works for a local welding shop and he's been told by his supervisor that he could advance and earn more money if he had training in just a couple of areas of his trade. But the idea of committing to a three credit class when he only needs to develop a couple of competencies here and there seems like a waste of time and money. Emma's worked in an office for several years but doesn't hold a credential. When inquiring about a degree at Nicolet College, her recruiter just forgot to mention the credit for prior learning option. Emma got turned off by paying for a bunch of redundant co coursework for things she's feel, she feels she's already mastered on the job. A first-gen student, Ross, his family never had conversations around the dinner table about how to navigate higher education. After his first advising appointment, all the acronyms just seemed really overwhelming to Ross. Ross and his parents were super intimidated by the FAFSA. Ross never made it through the admissions process. On behalf of the Nicolay College Board of Trustees and our president, Dr. Richard Nelson, please accept our deep gratitude for attending our session. I would not have the honor of standing before you today were it not for dozens of innovative, inventive, and extremely intelligent people who support our efforts at Nicolet College. Two of those individuals join me today, Ellen Mathine, faculty from our business management program, and Al Javorowski, our Dean of Business. My name is Kate Farrell, and I support Nicolay College as Executive Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs. Ellen, Al, and I will walk you through our journey to provide flexible learning options to busy adult learners through the respective lenses in which we three serve. Nicolay College is an associate degree granting institution in northern Wisconsin. We are part of the 16-school Wisconsin Technical College system and were founded in 1968 with a dual-purpose mission to provide community college and technical education for a district encompassing 11 school districts and over 4,000 largely rural square miles. For comparison, our district is roughly the size of Delaware and Rhode Island combined. Our far and wide geographic footprint can be quite a barrier to those residing nearly two hours from our campus. Beyond our credit offerings, Nicolet College also offers rich community and continuing education programming, which when combined with our credit offerings, allows us to serve more than 10,000 residents annually. Fueled by our mission of delivering superior community college education that transforms lives, enriches communities, fosters economic development, and expands employment opportunities, we believe we are obligated to be a major player in the economic development space. We believe that by almost any measure, economic and social well-being within a region parallels the educational attainment of people who live there. In our region, educational attainment and per capita income lags behind much of Wisconsin. So it follows that Nicolet College can transform more lives and more positively impact communities by engaging as many people as possible in higher education and helping them get a leg up or two. Significant to this image is the number of part-time students we serve. We have always served a large number of part-time students, but we see this number growing every year. 
The declining number of traditional, full-time students really opened our eyes and caused us to look at our college mission through a different lens. Nicolay MyWay is a leading edge learning model designed for busy adult students seeking to advance careers in high demand fields. Nicolay MyWay is all about removing barriers for busy adults while improving job outcomes and increasing enrollments. Nicolay College developed Nicolay MyWay to better serve a region in which fewer than 40% of residents aged 20 to 45 hold a post-secondary credential and where employers struggle to fill skilled positions. Nicolay MyWay provides a flexible path to education with fully online programs and competency-based education. This means students can learn anytime, anywhere, and at their own pace. Students are supported by success coaches and faculty. Key structures around Nicolay MyWay include quality, flexibility, access, and affordability. Adjusted financial aid support, which expands and contracts according to the student's own pace. Labs staffed with faculty, adult basic education staff, and coaches. And credit for prior learning that honors learning that has happened outside of traditional academic settings. We needed to acknowledge and address barriers. Remember Sarah? Her barrier was time. As a shift worker, we needed to reduce prescribed time on campus and create flexible touch points. For Jake, we needed to bridge his skills gap and swoop in with targeted curriculum built in consultation with industry. Emma's financial constraints could be mitigated by honoring prior learning no matter how, when, or where it occurred. And for Ross, Success coaches need to support and navigate prospective students, especially those first-gen students, through the sea of acronyms and complex processes that too often turn off our first-gen students. Under the umbrella of Nicolay MyWay programs and services is competency-based education, also known as CBE. We were among the first community colleges in the nation to offer CBE and were the first Wisconsin Technical College System College to uh, offer CBE. CBE is an educational model that recognizes learning time will vary, but holds learning constant. Competencies are defined in close consultation with industry partners. Students progress by demonstrating mastery of chunked down competencies. Schedules adjust to fit learners' needs. Students begin when they're ready and match their learning plan to their very unique, very complex, very busy life circumstances. Ellen will now lead us through the process to create CBE in Nicolay College's business management program. Hi, my name is Ellen Mathine and I am a business management faculty member at Nicolay College. And in the first part of this presentation, Kate has told you the why behind CBE and why we as a school decided to go to CBE. And I am going to tell you about the how. In particular, I'm going to tell you about how we moved the business management program at Nicolay College to CBE. If you look at this slide, you'll see overall the high-level process. First, we defined the competencies. Then we aligned and created our assessments. And finally, we put our learning activities together. 
So how did we do this? Well, first of all, we started with a lot of blank whiteboards. We literally started from scratch. And the reason that we did this is because we didn't want to have any constraints at all. No constraints such as what we were teaching. So two summers ago, the other business management faculty member and an instructional designer and I got together in a room full of blank boards and we started defining competencies. What do I mean by competencies? Competencies are the knowledge, the skills, the abilities, and the behaviors that we want our business management students to have as they go through our program and be able to demonstrate to us. So we started filling up those whiteboards and we came up probably over the course of about six full days with a list of competencies that we felt represented those competencies that we want our graduates to possess and be able to demonstrate to us. Now you might ask, how did that differ from what you were already teaching? And the answer is, those competencies that we developed that summer were substantially the same, probably about 80 to 85% of the same competencies that we were presently teaching. But starting with a blank slate allowed us to innovate and ideate and really start from scratch. We changed the levels at which we were teaching some of the competencies, and then we added some things that we didn't previously have. For example, in business statistics, everyone's favorite topic, we were having our students actually do hypothesis testing. And after we went through the process of redefining our competencies, we decided, yeah, the students need to have some level of understanding of business statistics, but not at the level of hypothesis testing. So we pulled that out, and then we added in a digital marketing component. The world is changing and business is changing, and so this exercise was fantastic to refresh our competencies. We do this on an annual basis and even on a semester-by-semester semester basis, but this identification of competencies was great because we started with a fresh slate. The next process that we undertook was competency validation. I kind of call it our competency validation tour in that we took that list of competencies that we had developed and we went out and we talked to 30 business partners in our district. These are business partners that are actually hiring our graduates from the business management program. And they gave us their opinions on the competencies and the level at which we wanted the students to possess those competencies. We made a couple of other minor adjustments. And then the last step was we had a subscription with a company called Skills Engine, and they have a product called Calibrate. And basically, what Calibrate is all about is it is a database of job descriptions. These are jobs that our students would graduate and obtain once they have graduated. And those job descriptions contain the qualifications, the skills that employers are looking for on a regional basis. So we benchmarked that cold list of competencies against the database and we made a few other minor adjustments. So now we had a great list of competencies. We presented those competencies to our advisory committee to get their approval and it was on to the next step. Now you might think hmm, the next step is building the classes. No, not in the sense of backwards design, which really is the process that we used here at Nicolay College. The next step, as this slide depicts, is building the assessments. And you might think that's kind of backwards, and that's exactly what it's called. It's called backwards design. So we created the assessments next. We worked together with a great resource here at the college. He's called an assessment architect and he's part of instructional design. He brings research-based best practices in assessment and rubric creation. So 
So we created the assessments. Now, some of the assessments, maybe 10%, are what you would consider to be traditional assessments. Multiple choice, fill in the blanks, short answer. So for example, accounts receivable. On what financial statement do we find accounts receivable? Balance sheet or income statement? So probably about 10% of our assessments are those traditional assessments. But the lion's share of our assessments are called authentic assessments. What do I mean by that? The way I define authentic assessments is real life stuff, real life case studies and scenarios where we have the students apply and actually create. So we're at the higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Let me give you an example. In human resources, one of the competencies that we identified was higher quality employees, probably a pretty big competency in human resources. So in the assessment, the student actually builds a job portfolio around a particular position. They create a job description, they put together a compensation package that is a competitive one for recruiting. They put a recruiting plan together. Where are we gonna go out and source candidates? They put interview questions together. When we have candidates, how, what are we going to ask them? How are we going to find the best candidate? They put together selection processes and finally an onboarding process. That is a fantastic assessment to really demonstrate, for the student to demonstrate that they understand how to recruit high quality employees. But at Nicolay College, we really believe in relevancy. And so what we do in most of our assessments is we have an option. We tell the student, you can take the scenario or case study that we give you, or you can take a real life situation that you're encountering at your workplace and do the assessment on it. And thereby, they prove that they understand the competency, they met the competency, and they have a work product that they can now bring forward to their boss at work, or maybe if they are the owner of the business, they can actually use this portfolio at work. So let me give you an example of what one student did just this semester. She was in that HR competency of recruit high quality employees. And she had a choice. She could do it on a job that she was doing currently or one that she wanted to do upon graduation. But this particular student was actually a business owner. She's one of those adult learners that Kate talked about that we are attracting because of CBE. She and her husband own a concrete company. The concrete company is really growing and they're in need of a project manager. So she built that entire job portfolio around that project manager position. She built the job description, put a compensation package together, regionalized for our area, put together the interview questions that she would ask qualified candidates, talk to us about where she would recruit those qualified candidates from, and even put an onboarding process together. What a great uh, product that this student produced. Why? Because she showed me that she really understands and meets the competency, but now she's able to take that entire job portfolio and use it in her own business. That's relevancy at its best. And for probably 80% of our assessments, we try and give the student that opportunity. Do a real life assessment. The rubrics are the same, so we ensure uniformity there. The next step, going back to that first slide, is putting the learning activities together. And the learning activities here at Nicolay College, we're all online, we're all flexibly paced because of CBE. And so we really make our learning activities very relevant and very interactive. The one of the best things that we have been able to do at the college is make great use of open educational resources in our textbooks. When I got to the college in 2016, the cost of the books to our students for their two-year program was $3,500. The books were extre extremely high quality, uh, great publishers, wonderful material. Those publishers would change those books about every year. So it's very difficult for the students to actually sell those books back. 
during my first semester teaching here in 2016, a student came to me and said, I can't afford to buy the textbook. And it really gave me pause. We did arrange to get him some funding to purchase the textbook, but it presented an issue that we had. Many of our students from this rural area just couldn't afford $3,500. So again, working with instructional design and a person within that group that specializes in open resources, we started to convert all those classes with those textbooks to open resources. This semester, we have reduced the cost of our two-year program in terms of textbooks to $350 from $3,500 just four years ago. That's pretty cool for the student. But there's another great aspect of OER, and that is I take those textbooks and we push them into a product called Pressbooks. I edit that book down to the relevant stuff that the student needs to know. I put some of the other information in appendices that the student can read for developing a more in-depth knowledge of the competency. But it's need to know. It's very relevant information. Additionally, we embed understanding checks and we embed little quizzes within open educational resources through the use of a product called H5P. So not only have we reduced the cost significantly for our students for the textbooks, which are our main learning activity, but we are also giving them a textbook of really relevant information. That, in a nutshell, is the process that we used in business management to really bring our program to CBE. It's one of the most exciting things that I've been involved in in my entire career. We are attracting those adult learners now who need to balance their job, school, and a very busy home life. I'm going to turn the podium over now to my dean, Al Javaroski, and he's going to talk to you about some additional changes that the school made to facilitate CBE. Hi, my name is Al Javaroski. I'm the Dean of the Business and IT Programs at Nicolet College. You heard from Kate about why CBE and how we developed Nicolet My Way. You then heard from Ellen about the how we developed them and how we developed competencies and learning activities and assessments of those competencies. I am here to talk about some of the changes we have made and the impact that has had on various parts of the college. In order to grow Nicolet My Way, we needed to make investments in CBE and various components of the college. As you see in this slide, we made investments in our staff, learning a new language of CBE, and also a lot of new ways of doing things. To do that, our staff attended several conferences, we brought experts in, and we did a lot of teamwork and team development through all of the parts, or with all of the parts of the college. We also needed to invest in our infrastructure. We thoroughly reviewed our learning management system, as well as other management systems, and ultimately decided to, to make a change in LMSs. Most importantly, however, we invested in the success of our students and our faculty through the use of success coaches. Success coaches are assigned to programs and to all of the students in the programs. Success coaches at Nicolet College were pivotal to the success to, of our students and to their experience with CBE. As you see in this slide, the initial conversations with the student were critical. Understanding the student's goals as well as our expectations. Our expectations of, this, of the students being a college student, taking a credit course in a program designed to develop and assess skills needed for employment. If you saw the video at the start of our presentation, you would have seen a success coach, Dwight, uh, working with one of our business management students on this initial conversation, as well as an ongoing conversation throughout the student's career. Helping students navigate and understand the process of CBE has been critical. 
After all, many people understand the language of two-year and four-year programs. They may understand credits, semesters, grading, uh, and other things. But with Nicolet My Way, pacing and guiding through a program can be very different. After all, students can sign up for one competency and one credit, or they may take a full set of classes and credits all at the same time. Uh, as students finish a class or a competency, they can sign up for another one and continue at their own pace. Major role of the success coaches is then developing a pacing guide. Once they determine the completion goal of the student, they work with them on how to pace their education to achieve that final desired completion time. You'll see at the bottom of the slide the, the other important piece of our success coaches is their connection to the faculty and to the faculty's success. In order to accomplish that, we moved our success coaches right next to our faculty, faculty's office, so that they could provide real-time feedback to our faculty from the students. Another area of change in the college is in our credit for prior learning. We had a relatively traditional approach in the past with challenge exams, portfolios, and artifacts. With those, we took narrative or artifacts from a student, we compared them to a course description, and we made a determination if we were to award credit or not. With CBE, however, our CPL is much more robust. We still compare narrative or artifacts with our courses. However, we are now comparing to competencies and rubrics. If the student shows competency, we can award credit. If the student does not show competency, we can get them quickly enrolled in the competencies that are needed in a much more timely fashion. As students read our competencies and have conversation with our success coaches, they talk about their experiences. This has provided more CPL conversation and led to more opportunities for credit than we have seen in the past. They also then tell others about their credit that they've received and it brings more interest to our programs. For example, when we had a local business announce its closure recently, one of their employees came to visit us to talk about opportunities at the college. Through those conversations, we acknowledged the opportunity for credit for prior learning based on the work that they've been doing. They returned to their employer, talked with coworkers, and have since sent several students to us to get credit in the accounting programs, IT programs, and business management. This is a success for the college, success for the community, and a success for this employer. Final area that I would like to talk about the impact CBE has had is in our continuing education department. Like many colleges, we have a lot of activity in community and continuing education. Everything from one hour informational session to custom contracts and custom training. Many people want to learn or improve a skill, but they may not be interested in taking a college course. Traditional college catalogs and course descriptions and credit values do not necessarily align well with the needs or requests of these folks. Competency-based education and the flexibility inherent in Nicolet My Way has made changes to the way we do our continuing education. The same competencies, the same learning activities can be used for non-credit training as well as credit. An example of how we have used credit courses in a non-credit continuing ed is our Inside Leadership Program. Our Inside Leadership Program contains nine competencies in leadership that are aligned with the competencies in the business management program. Students learn from the same materials and resources, whether it's a credit or a non-credit course. 
At some time after the learning is completed, if the student wishes to take the assessment and it's scored with the rubric, we can award credit for the materials that they've already learned. The net result of this non-credit to credit transfer is that we are growing the opportunities for people to obtain a college degree with us. We are increasing the engagement in our college and we are fostering a much greater relationship with our communities. I will now send you back to Kate for some final thoughts. We've come to the point in our journey where we find ourselves catching our breath and looking inward to critically evaluate and celebrate our seminal work. By higher ed standards, we've come incredibly far, incredibly fast. In December of 2019, we conducted an internal staff survey to identify gaps in knowledge which existed around our flexibility initiatives. This information is being used for ongoing training and professional development. We're re-examining what we need to know about Nicolay MyWay programs and services to measure success. Traditional measures of retention and graduation rates don't seem to make sense to count in a truly student-focused model. And given accreditor changes to faculty qualifications, this model holds potential for expand expansion of high school career and technical education programs as a way to meet critical workforce needs. CBE may be a solution to this issue, as the high school teacher would serve as the success coach and the Nicolay College instructor would serve as the instructor and or the assessor. Busy adults have responsibilities and commitments they cannot change and that they cannot neglect. By focusing on learning, not seat time, we've developed a flexible learning environment that fits the lives of busy adult learners. The flexibility realized in Nicolay MyWay programs, especially those offered in the competency-based education modality, holds ex exceptional potential to meet the critical workforce and economic development needs of a predominantly rural region like that of the Nicolay College District. Nicolay MyWay provides one model to realize that potential. And perhaps, most importantly, Sarah, Jake, Emma, Ross, and their employers are counting on us. It has been our pleasure to share Nicolay MyWay removing barriers, increasing access, and building capacity to serve the new adult learner with you today. We welcome any questions you may have. Thank you.